Amen. Well, Merry Christmas. It's good to see all of you this evening, and uh, I love Christmas traditions. One of the tradi Christmas traditions I love is here at Aldersgate at our Christmas Eve service, taking up the offering to go completely to missions and to go to Aim for India and to build this school there. And uh, I just want to remind you as you're doing that this that evening, if you are like me and you don't carry cash or check, uh, and you want to contribute, you can do that online. It's aldersgatelive.org. You can do that anytime, and you just designate India, and uh, it, it'll go to that place, I promise you. So speaking of Christmas traditions, I know several of you, probably all of you in here, have some kind of Christmas traditions. Some of you are probably here, and uh, you're going to go and have a big family dinner after this, and then uh, tear into the Christmas presents underneath the tree. Uh, some of you may have already opened all your presents. Some will wait till tomorrow, although your kids disagree with that. Uh, there's all kinds of Christmas traditions. When you look at all the kind of things that happen around this season of the year, there's all things that are traditions. One of the traditions at Christmas or during this season is Christmas lights. Now you need to know that I have a love-hate relationship with Christmas lights. Uh, I love looking at Christmas lights. I love seeing Christmas. I love seeing all the houses lit up. Uh, I love seeing Christmas trees all lit up. But I don't want to be the one who's putting them up. My wife asked us to put Christmas lights up on the house this year, and so I did exactly what she asked us to do. Um, if you don't know us, uh, it's, it's me and her. We have two boys, one who's 17 and one who's 13. And uh, so I guess I should say they put the Christmas lights up on the house. But nobody at our house wants it up but her, so we do it for her. Um, no, honestly, listen, I, I'll tell you, I, I think I outdid myself this year. This, this is our Christmas tree at the house. I think I did a pretty good job putting lights up. What do you all think? Um, and maybe y'all have seen our house in Lubbock, but this is what we did to the outside of our house this year. So uh, if you see that in Lubbock, um, you know, the tradition of Christmas lights uh, came from the Bible. Did you know that? You heard the Christmas story read this morning, uh, this evening, the traditional Christmas story. Uh, in the Bible, there's four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those books are all the story of Jesus and his ministry. They're just told from a different point of view, a different perspective. And in Matthew and Luke, we get the traditional Christmas story. The story about Mary and Joseph and the trip to Bethlehem and there's no room in the inn. And so Jesus is born in a manger in a feed trough. And the angels show up and start singing to the shepherds and tell them that they need to go and see. And then a star appears a long ways off in the sky. And the wise men follow the star and they find the baby Jesus. Uh, but in John, in the Bible, we get a different perspective of the Christmas story. John doesn't tell us anything about Mary and Joseph. He doesn't tell us anything about the angels. He doesn't tell us about the shepherds. He doesn't tell us about the wise men. John gives us the perspective of the light of the world and how the light came in to the darkness. So you've already heard the traditional Christmas story this evening. So I want to read to you the Christmas story out of John. If you have a Bible, you can turn there. You don't have to. If you want to look it up on your phone, you can do that. Or I'm going to put it up here on the screen as well. But this is John, starting in chapter 1. I just want to read the Christmas story from John's perspective to you. It says, In the beginning was the Word. That's Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light, that's Jesus. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is John the Baptist. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. 
The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. John tells us that Jesus came into the world as the light of the world. That the light came into a dark place. But in verse 5, he says, the light will never be overcome by the darkness. That word overcome there is a Greek word. It's a compound Greek word. And those two words, when you put them together, the first part of that word uh, means strength, domineering strength. The second part of that word means to cover up or to contain or to hide. And so when you put those words together, it means to to cover up or to hide or to, to seal very strongly. And John says that the light will never be overcome. Sealed up, covered up by the darkness. Now that doesn't mean that the darkness won't try. You guys watch the news? You get feed on your phone or whatever technological device you use. We live in a dark world. In a dark culture, we've We've moved past the cold world to a a time of fighting extremist, uh, radical, uh, Islamic, uh, ISIS. We read on the news and hear about the terror and the evil uh, because of those who don't believe in the light. Those who know the light but don't like what the light stands for. Not a, a, it's, it, it almost seems like in our culture today, not a week or a month goes by that we don't hear a report of some senseless shooting somewhere or some tragedy somewhere. Maybe even on a personal level in your life this evening, you're facing some kind of darkness or feel overwhelmed by some kind of darkness. Maybe you're dealing with an overwhelming darkness from a recent diagnosis that you've been given. Maybe your marriage is in a season of, of darkness that seems overwhelming. Perhaps you're in a season of financial difficulty or woes. Perhaps you're dealing with some kind of battle, an addiction or a hurt or a habit. Perhaps you're a parent here and you long for your prodigal child to come home. For all of us, it can be different. We can all be overwhelmed with the darkness from time to time. But listen, the message of Christmas is that the light is never overcome. By darkness. The light is never. Even in the Christmas story, you see darkness and you see light overcoming the the darkness in the Christmas story. Back in the traditional Christmas story, there's this King Herod when Jesus was born. And King Herod thought Jesus was going to threaten his throne. And so Herod had all the baby boys killed in the region. Even in the Christmas story... We find darkness, but the good news is light always wins. But we have to receive the light. That's the message of Christmas. In verse 114 in John chapter 1, John tells us that the the, the word became flesh. The message translation, Eugene Peterson, he says, he moved into the neighborhood. That's the message of Christmas is that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the manger. And John tells us he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. Listen, for those of you who haven't opened packages already, you're just excited to get home and open those packages, aren't you? You can't wait, right? 
Now, ask, you know, what, what if you went home this evening and you, you just, you know, everything went crazy and it was chaotic and everybody was opening presents and everything was happening. And at the end of the night, there was one present left under the tree that didn't get opened. What, what, what would that be like? Everybody would want to know who, whose name is on that present. Who didn't open that package? Who didn't see what's waiting for them inside the box? Or for those of you who are lazy rappers, inside the sack. Who, who, what would that be like? John says, the greatest gift ever given. And there were some who didn't open it. There were some who didn't receive it. John, uh, Jesus himself, later in John, over in John chapter 8, verse 12, says, I, this is Jesus speaking, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, let me translate that for you, whoever receives me, whoever believes in me, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life in john chapter 12 verse 46 he says this i have come into the world this is jesus again i have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me whoever receives me may not remain in darkness it's real simple jesus said all you have to do to receive all you have to do is to open the package is believe and confess that Jesus is who he says he is. The light will never be overcome by darkness, but we have to receive the light. And then Jesus said this, we have to be the light. Wait a minute, I thought Jesus was the light. He is. But Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 said, you are the light. He said, you're like a city on a hill. Shine your light so that everyone may see Jesus. So that you may point everyone to Jesus, to the light. It's like when you've been gone away from home and you're driving home and it's dark and off in the horizon you can see the lights. Isn't that a good feeling? To know that you're almost there because you see the light. Jesus says that's how we are to be to the world. We are to be the light. In Ephesians Chapter 5, verse 8, Paul says this, For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are in light. Walk as children of the light. That's what Christmas is all about. The light of the world came to us to overcome the darkness. Any darkness that you may be facing, But just as any other gift, we have to receive it and open it and let all see what was in the box, what we've received. Can, can you just do me a favor for just a second? Can you just get really still and really quiet? If you have little ones, you might want to hang on to them for just a second. And watch this. The darkness will never overcome the light. In the darkness places, the light will always shine through. So I, I don't know a lot of you. I don't know your life. Even those of you I do know this evening. I don't pretend to know what's happening in your life, what's going on this Christmas season, where you're at. But this is what I know. In the darkest places of your life, the light shines through. If you have received the light, and tonight Jesus sends us a reminder to be the light so that others in the darkest places can see and believe. He moved into the neighborhood. 
John tells us that his own, the world, did not believe him and did not receive him. The question for you and I tonight is will we believe and will we receive and will be a light that points others to the gift of Christmas? Here in just a minute, we're going to have some those that are going to be assisting to come forward. In fact, I'm just going to ask them to go ahead and come forward at this time. And what they're going to do is they're going to take a loaf of the bread, and they're going to take a cup of juice, and they're going to stand in front of each section here in the worship center. And here in just a moment, you'll have an opportunity to come forward and receive a piece of the bread and take that piece of bread and dip it in the juice. When you come, you're going to leave your row to the right. And you'll come forward and you'll receive a piece of bread and juice. And you'll grab a candle. And you'll return to your seat to the left. We're going to go front row to back row until all have been served. All are welcome. Anyone who recognizes that we all face darkness in life, but the light overcomes the darkness. All who want to believe and receive want a closer relationship with Jesus and want to be reminded that we are to be the light. We welcome all of you to come and receive. If you need a gluten-free option, you can come here to the table and receive. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for Christmas, for the gift that you gave to us through your Son, Jesus, the light of the world. And God, we pray this evening during this time that you would remind us to receive, to believe, to be the light. And that even in the darkest places, the light overcomes. We ask it in Jesus' name.